We see lots of poodle mix and doodle puppies in our in-person and online classrooms, and they can make wonderful pets, but we have to keep in mind there's a couple of busy dog breeds packed into this cute little package. In today's video, I'm going to talk about some of the biggest mistakes we see people make in that first week they have that doodle puppy home. I'm Instructor Steve. This is Little Stevie. Welcome back to McCann Dogs. The first mistake I see new puppy owners make is giving their puppies too much freedom. It's important that we set up some structure with these pups right off the bat, and I can tell you, sometimes the puppies lull us into a false sense of security. These young puppies have just come to your house, they've just moved in with you, they've just left their family, so you're kind of their safe zone for a little bit. And oftentimes, um, people think, you know what, I don't need to worry about creating my dog or managing their area because they stay with me all the time. That's pretty natural puppy behavior for these little, little teeny dogs like this nine week old puppy here. And you'll find that for the first couple of weeks, that's generally the case. But here's where it starts to change. After a couple of weeks, puppies like get a little more comfortable in the environment with you guys in the house and the world becomes a very exciting place to them. So what once was a puppy that stayed very close, more out of safety than anything else starts to go, holy cow, look at all these new things. And that's when they start to get into trouble. I get it though, you've got this cute puppy, it's adorable, you want it to be in bed with you and hanging on the couch and watching a movie and all those things. But at this point, it's really more about setting up how the world works and taking away some of the options for the pup to do things that we don't want them to do. I never want to be mad at my puppy for making puppy decisions. So me managing their environment, keeping a house line on them so I can prevent them from taking things and running away, using a crate when I can't directly supervise them, or have a little pen where if I can have eyes on them while I'm doing other things, I can prevent a lot of the mistakes that puppies will make on their own. And it's our job to set the, the record straight and say, here's how the world works, buddy, and I love you, and I'm not going to let you get into trouble, so I never have to be mad at you. Something as simple as a baby gate can really help divide off a space and give your pup a little bit of area to explore and live life, but they're not going to have access to the entire house and all those dirty laundries and all those things that smell great to baby puppies. Having everything I need to be successful in my training sessions with little puppies is really, really important. So I'm here at the McCandogs.store getting everything I need for today. So I've got my bait pouch. Uh, I'm going to grab a couple of different types of treats. Because we have a young baby puppy, I'm going to make sure I have a house line so that puppy can't wander off on me. And I'm also going to grab our McCandogs puppy tug. You can get all these items at McCandogs.store. The first thing that you need to teach your puppy is how to be right and how to let them know that that's the right thing in that right moment. Dogs learn within one second, so I need to be able to, within a second, let this busy little puppy know that she's right. So we use the word yes, and the word yes simply means in that moment, that split second, everything is correct. But how does our dog know that? Well, we need to take some time to build some value for the word yes. Now, uh, I've got some <laughs> I've got some treats here, but you notice I haven't got them out. And little Stevie's being a little busy. She's wandering around, she wants to chew on my shoelaces. And this is often a situation where people get into trouble because they don't know how to get the pups focused. Well, I'm gonna use something that most puppies are generally pretty darn interested in, and that's a little bit of food. So I'm just gonna get a little cheese here. Now, I know the first comment in this video is going to be, well, of course the dog's paying attention to you. You're using all that food. And yeah, 100% I am. I am making me more valuable than anything else in the world. And I'm using a commodity that's very important to most puppies, and that's food. Now, uh, we also get comments and say, well, if I do all this training, my dog's going to be 400 pounds. They're going to be overweight. There's a balance to be struck with the food that you're already going to feed them and incorporating some higher value treats like cheese or uh, other treats that are available. So if I know I'm gonna be doing a lot of training, first things first, I'm gonna use my puppy's meals for that. Instead of giving them a whole bowl full of kibble, I'll spend four or five minutes having that bowl there, teaching these dogs to do different things. If I may be going to a little bit more of a busy environment where I think I might need something that's a little more powerful for the dog, then I might cut back on the breakfast that I give them and give them some of those treats instead. As I'm working through my training, I'm taking into account the overall amount of food that they get in a day and making sure that it's still a healthy amount. All this food right now is money well spent because really um, we want to create that positive association. Over time, once the dog understands some behaviors, we can wean away from those amount of treats right now. But right now it's all about setting up this little pup for success. I've got my line in hand so she can't really wander off, but I'm not holding it tight. I'm just keeping her from leaving me. And all I'm going to do is get her pointed in my direction and simply say yes. And as long as she's respectful at taking that treat, I'm going to let her have it. Yes. Good girl. 
Oh, we gotta get the teeth working on that one. Hey, miss. Yes. Good. So she's gently licking to investigate that treat, so she hears the word yes, and within a second, she gets to eat it. Whoa. Now, that time, get that girl, she was a little bitey. She was a little bit more interested in the treats. Now, she's not biting me per se, but I want to let her know that teeth are not acceptable. So if she happens to do that and get a little too overzealous with the food, I'm just going to pull it away quickly. Hey and I'm going to offer it right back to her. I'm simply going to remove that with a little voice, and I'm going to offer it back quickly. Now, this is another mistake people make, is they start to introduce a code word. They say, take it nice, take it gentle, and they pull the food away from the puppy. And you can see this puppy saying, hey, wait a minute, give me it back. Now she's going to have a pause up to try and get that. So I move it away quickly, and I bring it right back. The next thing you need to teach her, little doodle, is how to follow food, because now she's starting to understand that yes means things are good. I'm going to teach her simply to follow food because teaching her to follow food first leads into teaching her to sit, teaching her to lie down, teaching her to stand. So same process, I'm gonna get my treats in my hand and I'm just gonna put that food at her head level and I'm just gonna encourage her to move. Now, in typical puppy fashion, she said, oh, there's the end of the line. So I'm just gonna use that food to get her a little bit more focused. And when she's doing what I want, yes, yes. Go ahead, get that, oh, oh, oh. Now, She's very typical doodle here. She's Her little paws are coming up trying to figure out how to get this food. And all I'm doing is if the paws come up, yes, good. I'm not going to say yes at that moment. I'm going to wait until those paws are on the ground. Yes. Oops. Yes, good. So every time I say yes, she gets a little treat. Yes, good. That's what I want, little miss. And that can help her understand that good things happen for following food. Good. Now I might move her over this way. Yes, good girl. Good. I might take a little food and bring her back this way. Yes. And then I might just tip her into a... Yes. Good girl. Good job. Oh, dropped on the floor, little miss. Good. I can start to then teach her to move into different positions. I can teach her to move into a sit. Let's just see if I can teach her to move into a down. Yes. Good girl. Good job, miss. Okay. Yes, good girl. And pretty quickly, she's learning to move into those positions and she's getting yes for being calm and following that food. But you'll notice I haven't said the word yet. We sort of teach the dogs to go into the positions first before we ever ask them. Uh, human nature is to repeat commands over and over and over. And in our minds, we're helping, but these little puppies don't know what those commands are yet. So we're just not gonna use them. We're gonna get the dogs comfortable going into the positions. And then later down the road, we can add in the word. I'm gonna give you the best kept secret in puppy training when it comes to teaching them to respond to their name. And that secret is to not use their name. Us humans are terrible for saying our puppy's name in front of everything. Spot, sit, spot, down, spot, come here, spot, 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 spot. And over time, we completely devalue that sound. Your puppy's name is just a sound to them, but if there's no association built with it and it's used all the time, it turns into white noise. So you all have cute little nicknames for your puppies. Uh, you all have little kissy noises, little pup, 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 pup. Those are things that you're going to use in day-to-day -day life with these dogs, and you're gonna teach your dog how to respond to their name. So I'm going to start teaching little Stevie here her name. Now, again, I've got this great food here. She is very interested in it. And this is the exact time I'm going to take advantage of that. And all I'm going to do is say her name and immediately feed her. Much like I create an association with the word yes, I'm creating this positive association with her name. So I've got her pointed in my direction. I don't really care if she's standing, sitting, lying down. <laughs> I'm just gonna say her name in a nice, happy tone and then immediately feed her. So I got a little cookie here. Oh, Miss, where'd you go? Where'd you go? Good, good job. Stevie. Good, there. Stevie. Yes, good girl, Miss. Stevie. Yay! Stevie! Yay! Good dog! Holy cow! She's starting to put together, wait a second, when I hear this noise, this particular noise, good things happen. You notice she got a little distracted and wanted to go for my hands, and that's often those times when people will use their puppy's name and sort of not take the value or not put the value to it. I waited until I had her focus, I had those treats there ready to go, and then I was able to say her name and create that association. We're just scratching the surface on what to do that first day and first week you have your little doodle puppy home, but if you'd like more personalized support for you and that pup, check out our Puppy Essentials online training program where you can have access to McCann Dogs instructors five days a week to help solve all the struggles that you're having with that puppy, because you're not in this alone. If you'd like more information on that, the link is in the description below.
So the next thing that you need to focus on with this puppy is getting them comfortable with your hands on them, getting them comfortable with you calmly taking control of them. Over the course of their life, especially these little doodles, they're gonna need to be groomed. Their nails are gonna need to be clipped. They're going to need to go to the vets. And those are times when people are gonna have to have their hands on puppies. And one of the things that I want my dogs to know I want your dog to know is that hands on them are a good thing and hands on them are a part of life. Now, I am just holding on to little Stevie's collar here and you can see, again, she's being typical puppy. She's saying, oh, I don't want to sit still. I want to run around. I want to do all those things. Now, I'm not scolding her for doing any of that. She's being a puppy. What I am going to do is start to change her association with me taking a hold of her collar. She's still a little excited for the food. Hey, good. But I'm doing it in a calm, deliberate manner. Yes, good. Yes, that's what I want. So that right there, I felt her relax. I was holding her collar. She got a yes and a treat. Okay. At the vets, the uh, vet is not going to just take a hold of your puppy's collar. They're also going to need to check their ears, check their eyes, check their feet. And I take the same approach to each body part and getting our dogs comfortable and accepting of my hands on them. Now she's again, pretty darn excited. But because I did that little bit of work on holding her collar, I'm just able to steady her. Yes, good girl. So I'm gonna to start to add maybe a hold of her ear. Yes, good girl. Yes, what a good girl. I might let go of that, that ear, I might take a hold of her paw. Yes, good girl. Yes, good girl, that's what I want, good. I might just reach down and take a hold of her tail. Yes. Good girl, what a good puppers. You're amazing, very, very good. I can even take a little food and also start to guide her into a stand position. At the vet's office, they're gonna to need to have your puppy stand. At the groomer's, they're gonna to need to check out all of those things. Yes, good girl. Ooh, she says I'm a little fidgety there. Yes. Oh, you're so smart, love. Good girl. Okay, good job. So spending that time getting your dog comfortable with hands on them, realizing that good things happen with hands on them will benefit them throughout their life. Now, um, one thing I wanted to point out is as I'm taking a hold of any particular body part, I'm very calm about it. I'm not ruffling her up and getting her all excited. And when I take a hold of things like paws, I deliberately maybe just check out her toes. I open them up so that she understands the manipulation of it, not just the holding of the digit. Good girl, miss. Okay. What if I told you all those cool toys that you bought for your doodle puppy are actually ruining your relationship with them? Toys are a very important tool in dog training, but toys also have a very specific place. Uh, toys are something that we use to interact with our dogs. Oh, hey, that's enough, miss. Uh, but toys are my toys. They're not for my dog to take and wander off and do their own thing with. When I pull out toys, especially soft toys and tug toys or braided toys, I want them to be about me and the dog, not about the dog entertaining themselves. So how do we introduce toys? Well, you'll notice in this room, there aren't any toys on the floor for her to get distracted by or sort of wander off and do her own thing. I preserve the value of those toys by only bringing that out when I know we're gonna have some fun. So I've got my little puppy tug up here. I'm gonna bring it out and I'm gonna teach her that me and toys are super duper valuable. But, oh, she wants that toy already. Now, I'm not just gonna let her have it right away. I actually wanna build a little scarcity. I wanna make it sort of hard for her to get to so that she says, I really want that thing. So again, my line and my collar help me do that. Oh, she wants to grab it. And I'm okay with that. She's not being a bad dog. She's being super fun and interested. And when I tell her, okay, get it. Good girl, get it. We can have a little tug. We can have a little fun. We can have a little play. She can learn that all these good things happen with me and the toy. Puppies love to wrestle. They love to bite on things. They love to tug. And giving them how to do all those things will really, really help. Get that thing. Good. Now, she's got my little tug. I've still got my food here. Get it, get it, get it. I'm going to teach her that giving me the toys back means good things also happen. Good. Out. Oh. She says, I like the toy better than the food. Yes, good girl. What a good puppy dog. Good job, good. I've got my toy. Where's that toy? Are you ready? Are you set, miss? Oh. Okay, get it, get it, get it. Get it, get it, get it. Get that thing, get that thing, get that thing. Oh, she's crazy. Get it, get it, get it, get it, get it. Now these soft toys make it easy for her to chase and for her to jump on and for her to bite. This isn't a big hard toy. This is a soft fleecy toy and she's allowed to have a little bit of fun with it. Good job, go ahead, tug, 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 tug. Once again, I'm gonna get a little piece of cheese and I'm gonna tell her out. 
Yes, good girl, very nice. So not only is she learning that toys and me are fun, she's learning some rules along the way. She gets the toy when I say, and she needs to give it back when I also say. Now that you have a plan for that first week home with your doodle pop, you need to figure out what to do for the next two months. And if you'd like more information on that, click that video right there. Well, with that, uh, I'm Instructor Stevie. This is Steve, no. I'm Instructor Steve, this is little Stevie. <laughs> Happy training.